Shalom Israel, this is Will. Shalom. And I'm Larry with For Israel. In this video, we are going to discuss the demeaning of Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 through 18. These scriptures refer to the mark of the beast. Revelation chapter 13, verse 16 through 18. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand, or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he had the mark or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. The right hand and forehead mentioned in verse 16 are symbolic for thoughts and actions. This means that faith without works is dead, as is mentioned in James chapter 2, verse 17. You can sin by beliefs and actions, or just one of the two. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 1 through 3 and Zechariah chapter 3 verse 1 proves this. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 1 through 3. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profited me nothing. This means that when you look up the meanings of words in dictionaries without precepts, the results can be just noise. Yeah, yeah basically you get lost in translation, right? Right. Zechariah chapter 3 verse 1 talks about Joshua sinning. Zechariah chapter 3 verse 1 and he shewed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him now Deuteronomy 6 4 through 9 mentions that faith without works is dead Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 4 through 9 hear O Israel the Lord our God is one Lord and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might and these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. These verses are referring to keeping the laws at all times. Deuteronomy 11.18 says the same thing that Deuteronomy 6.8 says, but also what it really means. Deuteronomy 11.18 Therefore shall ye lay up these words in your heart and in your soul, and bind them for a sign upon your hand, that they, be, that they may be as frontlets between your eyes. The last paragraph under the dress definition in the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary mentions when all male Jews were expected to wear phylacteries. The last paragraph of the dress definition. Beginning about the second century BC, all male Jews were expected to wear at morning prayers, except on Sabbaths and festivals, two phylacteries, one for the forehead called the frontlet, the other on the left arm. They consisted of small leather cases containing four passages of scripture from the Old Testament. Exodus chapter 13, verses 1 through 10, verses 11 through 16, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 9, Deuteronomy chapter 11, verses 3 through 21. Now the law about fringes is mentioned in Numbers 15, excuse me, in Numbers chapter 15, verse 37 through 41. The book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 37. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations, and that they put on, that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. And it shall be unto you for a fringe, that ye may look upon it, and remember all the commandments of the Lord, and do them, and that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes, and after which ye used to go a-whoring, that ye may remember 
and do all my commandments and be holy unto your God. I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. Christ kept this law as mentioned in Matthew 9 and 20. Matthew chapter 9 verse 20. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. There are many precepts that talk about faith and works together. The following scriptures are some of the precepts. Exodus chapter 13 verse 9 and 16. Sirach chapter 15 verse 15. Proverbs chapter 7 verses 1 through 3. Sirach chapter 21 verse 21. Song of Solomon chapter 8 verse 6 and Revelation chapter 14 verse 12. There are many more precepts that prove that forehead and the arm are referring to faith and works, whether it is in a positive or negative way. The people that receive the mark mentioned in verse 16 include the heathens and Israelites that are sinners. Let's prove it. All, small and great, free and bond, and rich and poor are referring to sinners. Let's explain the precepts that mentions this group of people by listing precepts that mentions them separately and together to prove that the verse is talking about all sinners. Revelation chapter 13 verse 3 and 4 mentions all of the world worshiping the beast. Worshiping the beast is the same as receiving the mark. Revelation chapter 13 verse 3 and 4. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Daniel 9.11 mentions that all of Israel has sinned. Daniel chapter 9. Verse 11, and it reads, Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. We are under the curses because we sinned. There is a remnant of Israel that will stop sinning, and keep the commandments. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness. But is long suffering to usward. Not willing that any should perish. But that all should come to repentance. The all mentioned in second Peter chapter 3 verse 9. Is referring to all of repentant Israel. This is mentioned in Romans chapter 11, verse 26. Romans chapter 11, verse 26. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. It mentions that all of Israel will be saved. This isn't referring to every Israelite. Romans 9, 6 shows that some of the Israelites won't be saved. Romans chapter 9 verse 6 Not as though the word of God have taken none effect For they are not all Israel Which are of Israel The small and great that will receive the mark of sinners The book of Psalms Psalm 104 verse 25 Mentions the sinners as creeping things So is this great and wide sea Wherein are things creeping innumerable Both small and great beasts The small and great that won't receive the mark are Israelites. Leviticus chapter 11 verse 43 proves that the creeping things are sinners. Leviticus chapter 11 verse 43. Ye shall not make yourselves abominable with any creeping thing that creepeth. Neither shall ye make yourselves unclean with them, that ye should be defiled thereby. This is proven in Revelation 11 and 18 in Revelation 19, 5. Revelation chapter 11, verse 18. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come in the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that, they should, that, they sh that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants the prophets, and to the saints 
and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. Revelation 19, verse 5. And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. Revelation chapter 6, verse 15, and Revelation chapter 19, verse 18, are referring to the same group of people that will be destroyed. More of the descriptions that are mentioned in Revelation chapter 13, verse 16, are mentioned in these verses. Revelation chapter 6, verse 15. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens, and in the rocks of the mountains. Revelation chapter 19, verse 18. That ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. First Edges chapter 3 verse 18 and 19 talks about what causes people to become sinners. First Edges chapter 3 verse 18 and 19. And he said thus, O ye men, how exceeding strong is wine. It causeth all men to err that drink it. It maketh the mind of the king and of the fatherless child to be all one. Of the bondman and of the free man, of the poor man and of the rich. Wine in these scriptures refers to sin, which is the mark of the beast. Since we mentioned one of the precepts to prove what the mark is, let's prove with more precepts that the mark is sin. The mark isn't different from the number, image, and the name of the beast. This will be proven by the end of this lesson. A mark can be positive or negative. Micah chapter 2 and 11 and Revelation 17 and 2 are two precepts that refer to wine as sin in a negative context. Micah chapter 2 verse 11. If a man walking in the spirit of falsehood do lie saying, I will prophesy unto thee of wine and of strong drink. He shall even be the prophet of this people. Revelation chapter 17 verse 2. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Ezekiel chapter 9 verse 4 and Revelation chapter 7 verse 3 refer to marking in a positive context. In these two scriptures, sealing and marking are referring to the same thing, which is getting the understanding of the Bible and keeping the commandments to be saved. Ezekiel chapter 9 verse 4. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Revelation Chapter 7, verse 3 reads, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 28, uses the word mark in a negative context. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 28. You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you, I am the Lord. The scripture is twofold. It is referring to not being sinners and not to cut yourself for some pagan ritual. Jeremiah chapter 16 verses 6 through 7 proves the physical part of Leviticus chapter 19 verse 28. Jeremiah chapter 16 verse 6. Both the great and the small shall die in this land. They shall not be buried, neither shall men lament for them nor cut themselves, nor make themselves bald for them. Neither shall men tear themselves for them in the morning, to comfort them for the dead. Neither shall men give them the cup of consolation, to drink for their father or for their mother. The spiritual part of this verse is proven in the Revelation chapter 13 verse 6. Leviticus 19 and 28 doesn't mean 
that you can't have your flesh cut. Sirach chapter 10 verse 10 is a twofold scripture that proves this. Sirach chapter 10 verse 10. The physician cutteth off a long disease, and he that is today a king, tomorrow shall die. Leviticus chapter 19 verse 28 is used as a precept to say that an RFID is the mark of the beast because we aren't supposed to have our flesh cut. We don't believe that the mark of the beast is a RFID, getting definitions of words from their original language by the interpretation of men won't always give the correct interpretation of scripture if you aren't proven information with precepts from the Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 1 proves this. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Isaiah 36 and 6 says that being pierced by the staff of Pharaoh is, is symbolic for trusting and oppression, which is one form of sin. Isaiah 36 and 6. Lo, thou trusteth in the staff of this broken reed on Egypt wherein were on, if a man lean, it will go into his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh king of Egypt to all that trust in him. The following precepts will prove that being pierced or pricked can be positive or negative depending on whether Christ or Satan is pricking you. Sirach chapter 14 verse 1. Blessed is the man that hath not slipped with his mouth and is not pricked with the multitude of sins. Sirach chapter 12 Verse 12, set him, not by the, set him not by thee, lest when he hath overthrown thee, he stand up in thy place. Neither let him sit at the right hand, lest he seek to take thy seat. And thou at the last remember my words, and be pricked therewith. Sirach 21, 1 through 3. My son, hast thou sinned? Do so no more. But ask pardon for thy former sins. Flee from sin as from the face of a serpent. For if thou comest too near it, it will bite thee. The teeth thereof are as the teeth of a lion, slaying the souls of men. All iniquity is as a two-edged sword, the wounds whereof cannot be healed. And Sirach 22 and 19. One way that scriptures can be proven right or wrong is by viewing the fruits of the people that preach certain information. This is proven in Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 22 and Matthew chapter 7 verses 15 through 20. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 22. When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing that follow, if the thing follow not nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 through 20. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. James Strong and other translators of Hebrew, Greek, and Latin words are Edomites. Psalm 147, verse 19 and 20 reads, He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. David Byrd is an Edomite that had a dream about the RFID being the mark of the beast. Sirach 34, verse 5 and 8 talks about dreams. 
Sirach chapter 34, verses 5 through 8. Divinations and soothsayings and dreams are vain, and the heart fancieth as a woman's heart in travail. If they be not sent from the Most High in thy visitation, set not thy heart upon them. For dreams have deceived many, and they have failed that put their trust in them. The law shall be found perfect without lies, and wisdom is perfection to a faithful mouth. I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Dreams must follow the laws of the Bible. There are words in the Bible that are defined different ways from sources outside of the Bible that aren't the meaning of the words in the scriptures. We've researched the meanings of words including karagma, thawa, spurgizo, kwai kwai, and uh, other words in their original language. Sometimes the definitions in dictionaries don't agree with the meanings in the scriptures. Look up the meanings of words Use in the Bible and use precepts to find out if the meanings in dictionaries agree with the Bible's meanings. If a person gets a RFID and keeps the laws of the Bible, the RFID won't be able to control them. This is proven in Numbers chapter 23, verse 23. Numbers 23 and 23. And it reads, Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. Neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, What hath God wrought? Mind control is under the category of witchcraft. Galatians 5, 19 through 21 mentions witchcraft. Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through 21. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. The Greek word for witchcraft is pharmakia. Witchcraft includes drugs, science, and magic. One precept for science is in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 20 through 21. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 20. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. Revelation 14, 9 through 11 mentions that if people receive a certain mark, they can't be saved. Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 through 11. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast, and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. This mark is talking about rejecting the Bible. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, which is the scriptures, is the only sin that someone will not be forgiven for. This is proven in Matthew chapter 12, verses 31 through 32. 
Matthew chapter 12 verse 31. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. The RFID is a weapon that won't work on someone to keep the laws of the Bible. This is proven in Isaiah 54 and 17. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. We can be killed by weapons, but that doesn't mean that it affects the salvation of someone that keeps the commandments of the Bible. This is proven in Revelation chapter 2, verse 10, and Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Revelation 20 and 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of men that were beheaded, for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had he received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Genesis chapter 17, verses 10 and 11, and Exodus chapter 21, verse 6, are precepts that prove that we can cut our flesh. Genesis chapter 17, verses 10 and 11. This is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised and ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. Exodus 21 and 6. Then his master shall bring him unto the judges. He shall also bring him to the door unto the doorpost and his master shall bore his ear through with an awl, and he shall serve him forever. The mark is also mentioned in Genesis 4 and 15. Genesis chapter 4, verse 15. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any find in him should kill him. This is the mark of sin. It is a physical mark and spiritual mark. The spiritual mark is by knowing that a person is a sinner by watching their actions. Part of the physical mark is color as mentioned in Genesis chapter 4 verse 11 and Genesis chapter 25 verse 25. Genesis chapter 4 verse 11 And now art thou cursed from the earth which have opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. Genesis 25 and 25 And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment and they called his name Esau. Since we are talking about the physical mark Let's go ahead and explain the image of the beast. Genesis chapter 4 verse 11 and Genesis chapter 25 verse 25 are two of many scriptures that talk about color. Revelation chapter 12 verse 3 talks about a physical description of the beast. Revelation chapter 12 verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. This beast is red because it is made up of the top Edomite governments of the world. Red signifies the color of the people as mentioned in Genesis chapter 25 verse 25. The heads signify kingdoms or governments as mentioned in Revelation 
chapter 17, verses 9 and 10. Revelation 17, verse 9 and 10. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And there are seven kings. Five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. The crowns signify ten horns, are the ten more kingdoms that will temporarily receive power with the heads as mentioned in Revelation 17 and 12. Revelation chapter 17 verse 12 and the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet but receive power as kings one hour with the beast anyone that doesn't sin just like the beast is usually put in a low state in this kingdom as is mentioned in Revelation chapter 13 verse 15 and first Maccabees chapter 8 verses 1 11 and 12. Revelation chapter 13 verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. First Maccabees chapter 8 verse 1. Now Judas had heard of the Romans that they were mighty and valiant men, and such as would loving and such as would lovingly accept all that joined themselves unto them, and make a league of amity with all that came unto them. Verse eleven. It was told him besides how they destroyed and brought under their dominion all other kingdoms and isles that at any time resisted them. But with their friends and such as relied upon them, they kept amity. And that they had conquered kingdoms both far and nigh, insomuch as all that heard of their name were afraid of them. We were made in the image of God, as mentioned in Genesis 1 and 27, and Genesis 5, 1 verse 2, which is a physical and spiritual. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Genesis chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. The buying and selling in verse 17 is referred to the point that the people that keep the commandments aren't able to gain worldly riches in this world. To trade with people, most of the time in this world, people must sin, as is mentioned in Sirach 27 and 2. Sirach chapter 27, verse 2. As a nail stick of fast between the joinings of the stones, so doth sin stick close between buying and selling. Revelation chapter 18 verses 11 to 14 shows what the sinners were exchanging during trades. The scriptures aren't just talking about the items mentioned, but all the items mentioned are symbolically referring to Israelites. Revelation 18 verse 11 through 14. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all fine wood and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments and the frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts, and sheep, and horses, and chariots, and slaves, and souls of men, and the fruits that thy soul lusted after departed from thee, and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. Ezekiel chapter 28 verses 4 and 5 are scriptures that refer to buying and selling too. 
Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 4 and 5. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches, and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. By thy great wisdom and by thy traffic hast thou increased thy riches, and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. There's a deeper meaning to the buying and selling mentioned in this verse. During the sixth trouble, we are unable to gather worldly supplies to survive the day of judgment before the seventh trumpet. The sixth trouble is compared to the sixth day. The seventh trumpet is compared to the seventh day, which is the Sabbath. Job chapter 5 verse 19 and Revelation chapter 21 verses 3 to 4 talks about the sixth trouble and the seventh trumpet. Job chapter 5 verse 19. He shall deliver thee in six troubles, yea, in seven, there shall no evil touch thee. The great voice in Revelation chapter 21 verse 3 is the seventh trumpet. Exodus chapter 16 verse 29 states that what is done on the sixth day and seventh day during a normal week. Revelation 21 and 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. Exodus chapter 16, verse 29. And it reads, See for that the Lord hath given you the Sabbath, thereof he giveth, you on the sixth day the bread of two days. Abide ye every man in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. This spiritually is referring to the sixth trouble and the kingdom of God. We aren't allowed to gain worldly riches during the time of Jacob's trouble unless we sin. This is proven in 1 Maccabees chapter 8 verse 1 and 11 through 13, and 1 Peter chapter 2, 1 through 5. 1 Maccabees chapter 8, verse 1, and verses 11 to 13. Now Judas had heard the fame of the Romans, that they were mighty and valiant men, and such as would lovingly accept all that joined themselves unto them, and make a league of amity with all that came unto them. Verses 11 through 13. It was told him besides how they destroyed and brought under their dominion all other kingdoms and isles that at any time resisted them. But with their friends and such as relied upon them, they kept amity and that they had conquered kingdoms both far and not, insomuch as all that heard of their name were afraid of them. Also that whom they would help to a kingdom, those reigned and whom again they would, they displaced finally, that they were greatly exalted. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. If so, be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God, and precious. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. The buying and selling for worldly riches won't save people that don't keep the commandments. This is proven in Proverbs chapter 11 verse 4 and 2 Ezra chapter 16 verses 74 through 78. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 4. Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. 2 Ezra chapter 16 verse 74 through 78. Hear, O ye, my beloved, saith the Lord, Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Be ye not afraid, after, af afraid neither doubt. For God is your guide. 
and the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Lord God. Let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. Woe be unto them that are bound with their sins and covered with their iniquities, like as a field is covered over with bushes, and the path thereof covered with thorns that no man may travel through. It is left undressed and is cast into to the fire to be consumed therewith. The mark, name, and number that are mentioned in these verses are all referring to the same thing, which is sin. There are other examples of scriptures in the Bible that repeat the same information a few times in the same scriptures. Here are a list of some of the other scriptures that have the same style of writing. Exodus chapter 1, verse 7. And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty, and the land was filled with them. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if he receive another spirit which he have not received, or another gospel which he have not accepted, ye might bear well bear with them. The book of Psalms, Psalm 148, verse 14. He also exalteth the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him, praise ye the Lord. Romans chapter 9, verse 3 and 4. I could wish myself that I were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. The scriptures prove that the words are interchangeable. Revelation chapter 16, verse 2 doesn't mention name or number. And name and number. Revelation chapter 20 verse 4 doesn't mention number. Revelation chapter 14 verse 11 states mark of his name. One of the names of the beast is referring to the governments of the nation of Edom. Let's prove it with precepts. Revelation chapter 17 verse 5 talks about a mystery Babylon. This Babylon is similar to the old Babylon, but it isn't Babylon. Revelation chapter 17, verse 5. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Psalms 137, verses 7 through 8, reveals what nation of people are ruling in the mystery Babylon. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. We will give more information about the name of the beast when we explain verse 18, we are called by the Lord's name, so we should keep his commandments, as is mentioned in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Revelation chapter 13, verse 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. The first part of verse 18 means that the people, they keep the laws, statutes, and commandments are able to figure out what the verse is talking about. The book of Psalms, Psalm 111, verse 10, proves this point. Psalm 111, verse 10. 
The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. You must keep the commandments to have wisdom and understanding. The beast and man that are mentioned in verse 18 are the same and are referring to people. The number of a man is referring to the 66.6% .6 of people that will be destroyed when the Lord returns. Zechariah chapter 13 verse 8 and Ezekiel chapter 5 verses 2 through 4 proves that 66.6% .6 of Israel will be destroyed just like they were destroyed in the past. Zechariah chapter 13 verse 8 and it shall come to pass that in all the land saith the Lord two parts therein shall be cut off and die but the third shall be left therein. Ezekiel 5 and 2 through verse 4. Thou shalt burn with fire a third part in the midst thereof, the city, when the days of the siege are fulfilled. And thou shalt take a third part and smite about it with a knife. And a third part thou shalt scatter in the wind, and I will draw out a sword after them. Thou shalt also take thereof a few in number, and bind them in thy skirts. Then take of them again, and cast them into the midst of the fire, and burn them in the fire, for there shall a fire come forth into all the house of Israel. 1 Kings chapter 10, 14 through 15 gives the representation of the 66.6% .6 of people that will be serving in the Israelites, serving the Israelites in the kingdom. 1 Kings chapter 10 verses 14 and 15 now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was six hundred three score and six talents of gold beside that he had of the merchantmen and of the traffic of the spice merchants and of all the kings of Arabia and of the governors of the country we should keep the commandments so that we can be numbered with the Israelites that will be saved, as is mentioned in Revelation chapter 7, verse 4. Revelation 7, verse 4. And I heard, of, uh, I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed a hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, mentions son of perdition and man of sin. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3 Let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition number of the beast number of a man which is 66.6% .6 son of perdition and man of sin are all referring to destruction Perdition means destruction, and sinners will be destroyed. This is the perdition definition in the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Uh, perdition, perishing, destruction. In each of the eight uses of the English word in the New Testament, John 17, 12, Philippians 1, 28, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 9, Hebrews chapter 10 verse 39, 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 7, Revelation chapter 17 verse 8 and 11. The final state of the wicked is referred to. In popular usage, men make this word a synonym for hell and eternal punishment. The beast and man aren't referring to one individual that has been called the Antichrist. The beast and man are referring to sinners. People are called beasts if they don't keep the commandments as is mentioned in the book of Psalms, Psalm 49, verse 20. The book of Psalms, Psalm 49, verse 20. Man that is in honor and understandeth not is like the beast that perish. 1 John chapter 4, verse 3 proves that more than one antichrist exists. 
1 John chapter 4, verse 3. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now already is it in the world. And Antichrist is a fool. This is proven in the book of Psalms, Psalm 14, verse 1. The book of Psalms, Psalm 14, verse 1. The fool have said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. This is also another precept for name of the beast. This is proven in Sirach chapter 22, verses 14 and 15. Sirach chapter 22, verses 14 and 15. What is heavier than lead, and what is the name thereof? but a fool. Sand and salt and a mass of iron is easier to bear than a man without understanding. The Lord will only save people that keep his laws and have faith. This is the end of the discussion about Revelation chapter 13 verses 16 through 18. Sirach chapter 33 verse 17. Consider that I labor not for myself only, but for all them that seek learning. Shalom.